We have several problems today. We think that, first of all, often families who are not actually able to take care of the child still choose to keep the child within the family, thus causing a lot of harm to themselves and to the child. We also think that we are having a lot of problem with making sure that when a family does get a child that is adopted, they are actually fit for that child, are actually going to take good care of him and not going to give him up after a few years. And then lastly, we think that we have a problem taking good care of the children that are staying in the welfare system. We think that this mechanism is just going to solve all three of these problems, as we're going to show. Let's talk about uh, the mechanism, and then we're going to talk about exactly what type of uh, um, cases we're talking about and why uh, uh, it is better that these parents give away their child. Then we're going to talk about uh, uh, how we're getting the best parents to take the children, and then we're going to talk about uh, uh, how this plays into the way that the welfare system runs. Um, okay, so basically, look, we already have today a, an existing adop adoption system. Um, what we are proposing to add is that now the body that is holding the uh, child is uh, allowed to receive compensation from the person who is taking the child. That means that if the child is right now in a state-run facility, that state-run facility can take money from the parent in order to uh, uh, get the child in return for taking the child. And if it is a parent, individual parent, who is taking a... a who is giving up for a child and that parent can ask for compensation or receive compensation for giving away that child. Um, we think that that does not mean that they are not allowed to take it or give it without compensation, but we think that this is definitely a mechanism that we are going to allow, which does not exist today. Um, clarifications? Okay, good. Um, so, let us talk about... Uh, so, so, yeah? How much will it cost? It's going to be millions of dollars, it's going to be a small compensation? Um, so we think it's probably not going to be millions of dollars, because then people can't afford it. We think it's going to be some sum that is determined by the market in the way that other things are determined by the market. Like what people generally can afford for a baby. Um, let's talk about... <laughs> let's talk about... Uh, okay, so look, we think that, first of all, it is important to notice that Usually, right, parents are very connected to their child. This is something that is very important, very essential to their life. And as a result, we think that most parents don't want to give away their child, even if there is economic incentive to do so. We think most parents, and this is why maybe there's some bias against this idea, feel that they prefer to keep their children in all cases, right? But what type of families might want to give up their child, right? So we're talking about families maybe that have very, very deep economic stress. Economic stress to the level that maybe they cannot take good care of their children. They know that maybe I have four children and I'm unable to take of all of them, and they know that if I give one away, I will be able to take care of the other three much, much better, and this will give me the ability to do so. Right? So we're talking about families that, for some reason, either because the parents are not good enough, or because, uh, 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 God forbid, one of the parents had some accident or something like that, they're unable to take care of the children, and they're not able to uh, deal with the stresses, either economically or, uh, um, or just the, the stresses of raising a child. Right? We're also talking about often parents that just didn't want to have a child in the first place, right? Parents that uh, uh, um, failed to use contraception or used it in the wrong way and they have a child which they did not want, right? And we think that the thing is that uh, some of these children are given, given up for adoption today, right? But we think that the thing is that at the moment that this mechanism exists, with the state uh, funding it, the state saying it is okay, it is legitimate, and as it will become more and more common, it's something that will be more widely accepted and will be normalized in people's minds, then there is much more support to do this, and so you find it much easier to deal with the idea. We also find, think that it is easier for you to justify it to yourself, to your family, and to your surroundings if you're saying, well, look, but I am getting the compensation, this compensation is going to meaning, be meaningful, for example, in taking care of my other children, right? We think that that means that it is easier for the children, uh, for the parents to come to the welfare of their own accord and go and actually give up the child. We think this is extremely important because there are many cases that welfare misses today. There are many cases where the child is being not taken care of as they should be taken care of, but, uh, uh, but the welfare does not get to them because it is hard to find all these cases. We think tomorrow they are much more likely to actually come and ask the welfare to take the child away, which makes it more likely that these children are receiving what they need. Right? We think that means we are getting more welfare and this also means that they are likely to get there at an earlier age, meaning there is much more room for the welfare to find them a good place before they grow older, because this process becomes harder and harder the older the child is, the more she or he understands, and the more places they've been through in life. Um, before we continue, I will take second. I will take opening, sure. Do you also support allowing different prices for different babies? Yes. 
Okay, um, let's talk about why we think that the market is the best allocator of babies, right? So we think that. Um, so generally, we think that the more that the family wants to have a child, the more they're going to take good care of their children, right? We think that in the society we live in, there are many pressures to have children. There's the pressure of, you know, my mother is always telling me to have children. Maybe my, all my other girlfriends have children, and uh, oh, degrees. <laughs> maybe all my other uh, uh, girlfriends have children, and I also want to be like them, and so on and so forth, right? We think that many parents go into this without thinking too much about what this is going to mean and what the meaning of it is going to be. Right? So we think that today, although we do have the basic, you know, uh, we do have uh, uh, in adoption the basic things that you need to go through, and you will still need to go through tomorrow, showing you are not like a disaster and you have the economic ability to take care of the child and so on and so forth. Still, the allocation is rather rental, right? Now, it is often happening in the welfare system today that a child is given up for adoption, and after half a year or a year, they are returned to the welfare system. We think this is something that is highly traumatic for the child because it often happens because the family did not think the thing through. Right? We think that when they need to pay a price, they're just more likely to think it through and more likely to make a good decision and actually think about whether they're able to take care of the child. Right now, they will let us look, but uh, obviously the market doesn't allocate solely based on a... Um on your preferences, but also based on how, the amount of money you have. So, first of all, we say that a family that has many economic needs, first of all, is also likely to be able to take care of the child better. We say that uh, um, in adoption, very poor families probably don't get to adopt anyway because they don't meet the criteria, because they don't have the ability to convince that they are good enough. And we see that uh, uh, families from the middle class are willing to pay a lot for children. How do we know this? Because IVF uh, treatment is also very, very costly in many, many countries, and still people decide to pay for it. So we know as a result that there is not such a big difference in the amount of money that people are willing to pay, and we think that people will be able to afford this. Right? Um, so, okay, I think Shulman will talk more about the welfare system. To sum up the things that we have said, we think that first, we think that there are many problems with the way that uh, the welfare system operates today. We think that we are not able to get all the children that need help to actually give them help. We are not getting the families that are best to take care of these children. We think that tomorrow we are just solving these problems and as a result we get a welfare system that is much better, more, more happy families, more happy children, and the world is perfect. Please propose. <laughs>